China knows how to present itself. It did so a few days ago at the celebrations for the 60th anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic and now as official guest country at the Frankfurt Book Fair. <laughs> China invested 10 million euros to present itself to the world as an open society and as a cultural nation that not only invented the printing press and paper, but that also uses state-of-the-art technology today. The official delegation that has come to Germany includes 100 writers, and they're definitely not all propagandists, as critics had complained in advance. Liu Xianyun is an actor and screenwriter and one of China's most successful authors. His novel, Pickpocket, which was filmed in 2008 as I Am Liu Yujin, has sold millions of copies. It tells the story of a petty criminal who challenges Beijing's power elite, a lone wolf. Many think the system is more important than the individual. But in my opinion, it is the reverse. The individual is more important than the system. Liu Xinyun says China censors film much more strictly than literature because censors don't like to read. His aim is to write good books, not to please or provoke the authorities. There are two books in the world. One grows ever thinner while it is read, and the other grows ever thicker. The latter is life itself. 47-year-old Hong Ying is one of the few women whose books made bestseller lists in China. One of her novels was filmed for television and had sensational viewer figures. A drama about love for sale and women's power. The film broke taboos, and not just because of numerous steamy scenes. We want to be equal to men. We want to have the same things men have, in reality. But the situation for women who live in the city is better than for women who live in the countryside. I really wish that many women will be able to achieve equality with men someday. Her most recent novel, The Concubine of Shanghai, is another story of love and sex. But Hong Ying also sees herself as a political writer. Twenty years ago, she took part in the demonstrations on Tiananmen Square. After the protests were brutally crushed, she moved to England. Her novel about the massacre first appeared in 1992 in Taiwan. In mainland China, it is still banned. Nevertheless, she returned to her home country and her native tongue. China is opening up. Liberation is going deeper in a way. During the last nine years I've lived in China, I've discovered more and more about that. People can talk about politics and democracy without being afraid in public places, like restaurants or the university. They can give a speech. This is a very serious matter. China has changed a lot. I say we should give it a chance and watch it change. People in China are increasingly circumventing bans on thought and publication, in part by using the Internet. Many authors write about private and political matters in their blogs, thereby avoiding the strict controls of the publishing houses. Tibet and Taiwan are big taboo topics in China, and it's difficult to write about them. If you're careful, you can post something about them on the Internet. But exiled writers like Ma Tian regard this as an intolerable situation. After the massacre on Tiananmen Square, he emigrated to England. Now 56 years old, he travels regularly to China. He compares the country's state to a coma with disastrous consequences. If a nation, a people, a country, really wants to be strong, then it has to let its history live. Then you must be permitted to remember what happened back then at Tiananmen Square. 
If the history is extinguished, then the spirit of this nation dies too. Ma Tian's novel, Beijing Coma, was published in English in 2008. It's the story of Yang Dai Wei, who was shot during the protests at Tiananmen Square and falls into a coma. He can't move, he can't speak, but he remembers. He remembers his father, whom Mao's Cultural Revolution branded a right-wing deviant and who went through the horror of a communist labor camp. Beijing Coma narrates the atrocities committed by the regime in extremely realistic detail. It is inconceivable that this novel could be published in China. In Beijing, I spoke about it with many people, and I saw that they are even more energetic and open than I am. But in the end, they all say, this is all just between us. Constant fear has become part of their life. In Frankfurt, that's the topic at many events that are held outside the official book fair program. And that pleases many people who, in advance of the fair, had vehemently criticized China's presentation. This discussion of authors is taking place, or this discussion of books. And that is this book fair's chance to really show Chinese literature as a whole and as a phenomenon that develops in freedom. Still, many authors from China were not permitted to attend the fair. Some are in prison or under arrest. But China's appearance in Frankfurt shows that small steps are being taken toward openness and toward the possibility of engaging in discourse. It's a beginning. Uh,